Hey team, I hope everybody's doing well. Just back with another hobby update. Uh, first one for October. Been working through a process of trying to clear all the outstanding half-prepared miniatures from around the place. I've got stored in various benches and things. Uh, so the first one, oh sorry, the next one in the order that I was trying to get knocked off was uh, some 30 years war Scottish mercenaries in Swedish service, which will also double as a covenant or army if I need them. So I've got the infantry component finished for that and the artillery. I've just got to finish off the cavalry and mounted dragoons now. Uh, so first thing this month was a frame gun. This one's from Warlord. Nice little kit. And to go with it, I've got a battery of two of the Perry, uh, I think these were Sakers, not sure, medium field pieces anyhow. Um, so relatively easy paint scheme, I just started with Vallejo chocolate brown and kept mixing in light grey um, till I got a colour on the, the hot and grey <coughs> uniforms that I was happy with. Uh, my understanding is it was basically undyed fabric, so I just wanted to make them the average, char uh, average character, average color of sheep, basically. Um, so I'm hoping this is sort of where it's landed. Uh, but yeah, got that done. Uh, next up was a storming party of dragoons. Uh, so I can just slide these into range. So again, these are all Warlord, as far as I can ascertain. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else in there. Um, again, nice minis, simple paint scheme. Um, everything been done in the paint, the same paint scheme made it a, a pretty quick project to push through. Also got a block of pipe. These are a combination of Warlord and Perry. Um, I'd been just basically building each of the Warlord boxes as I went, so that comes with 16 pike. Oh, 16 pike if you include the command, I should say. Um, but what I decided was to basically increase those to at least 24. This just makes the the unit look a little bit better, in my, my opinion, anyhow. Uh, flags from Flags of War, so thanks to Ian for that. Ah, so I've got Warlord and Perry in this unit. As you can see, they mix quite well. I think as gamers, we possibly get a little bit too hung up on having miniatures exactly the same size as people are all different heights and things. So it does stand a reason that there'd be some difference between um, people's stature and physique as well, I guess. Um, so that's the unit of 24. Also had the obligatory two wings of um, shot to go with. Just knocked him over. Very good. Um, so again, these are all Warlord. Uh, it's an older frame, simpler sculpts, but I'm really enjoying painting them. And once they're all done up, uh, they're certainly fit for purpose. Um, I mean, that's that's the one frame plus a metal command and I think eight metal parries added in and that looks like a perfectly good unit. So um, I think the, the sculpts still do stack up. And just finally, I've got uh, this is again more parries with some Warlord command. So the two files on the far left will be used for uh, additional standards once I can get stand make a hand on some standards for um, swapping out if I want to make this a Covenant or Army. And the other eight pikemen I'll use to push one of the other blocks of 16 up to 24, make it look a little bit more resilient. Alright, so that's the first thing I've got done this month, well, for the start of this month. And in all the fun and excitement of the uh, first update, I forgot to include these guys. So this is the Wall of Dragoons kit. 
Um, this is obviously eight foot dragoons. Uh, you can see they've got the drummer rather than a. Um, well, I keep wanting to say cornet, but apparently cornet's what the the standards for for cavalry, just to confuse things. Um, but as these are essentially mounted infantry, they've got the infantry uniforms and infantry designations, if that makes sense. So I've got another eight mounted dragoons, which I'll add in when I do the rest of the cavalry component. Again, just trying to get things off the bench. I had a box of um, uh, 30 Years War Catholics that I have had sitting around for a couple of years, so I wanted to get those done. So, again, just the basic Warlord Sprue here. The two infantry wings. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to go for a red and green um, theme for the Catholic forces, and then for the Swedes, I'm basically using blue and yellow to um, pick them. <coughs> excuse me, pick them out as they didn't have a standard uniform and used field signs instead. Um, my plan has just been to use. similar groupings of colours on each box that I paint and then once they're all done I'll just mix the units together um, so I'm not wasting too much time uh, changing between paints doing a particular box uh, so the units can I guess be more or less matched if I'm you know doing a club <coughs> excuse me doing a club game or something but um Otherwise, I can just mix them around and uh, hopefully get a bit of variation in the forces. Um, so again, the banner there is for from Flags of War. And to go with this one, I'd also picked up a couple of boxes of the um, Warlord Metal Swordsman. These are really nice. Really enjoyed painting these. Um, so my plan with this is to use the Sword and Buckler Men, in addition to some of the boxes of Armoured Pike, and just bulk up the size of the infantry blocks, again to make them a bit uh, more resilient and more threatening on the tabletop. Um, so yeah, these were a lot of fun to paint. As you can see, quite a lot of detail in the sculpts. Um, they really did sort of paint themselves, took a wash very well. Uh, was was really good fun to get through those. All right, so that's that. After a couple of years, I've got them tabletop ready at least. And the final thing I managed to clear off the paint bench this month, uh, taking back to fantasy this time was a bunch of Skaven clan rats. Um, so these were from, I'm going to say the 8th edition starter, although I can't remember which one was which to be perfectly honest. Uh, these were just speed painted with contrast paints. The Space Wolf grey colour is essentially non-metallic metal in a can, or a pot in this case. So. That works really quickly to get all these done. That's another four blocks, and now I've got six blocks. And with the addition of these three weapon teams. I think I've got five weapon teams in total now, so... That's probably a reasonable start on the core of an army. I'll put it past, and when I'm feeling a bit more inspired, I'll look at some of the... I guess, funner, more enjoyable options for um, getting units on the tabletop. But at least the, the bread and butter of a force is there now. And the final bit of hobby output that I've managed to achieve for the month um, was for Chain of Command. We just started playing uh, North Africa Chain of Command. Obviously it's really good fun, but one of the problems we're having is all the 
suitably appropriate terrain I had was hardcover, so rather than being fire and maneuver, everything just became fire and sit tight. So what I've done is made up half a dozen sections of dry riverbed, as you can see, uh, which can be linked together to create a larger terrain piece or just scattered about to uh, just provide light cover and break things up a little bit so that there's the opportunity to put some deployment points about without um, <clears throat> having everybody sitting up in towns behind concrete walls and things. Yeah, the um, gravelly base for this was uh, a bit of a revelation. This was just a, a big bag of reptile sand. I know when everyone goes to the pet store and sort of hits up uh, fish aquarium things for uh, plants, but if you are in a pet store in the near future, just go and have a look and see if they've got any reptile sand, because um, this was couple of kilos for $25 or something. I do a lot of terrain and this is going to last me for years, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so if you were doing a, a desert themed army, anything sci-fi for Mars or somewhere similar, uh, you wouldn't even need to do any, any work with it. If you were looking at any other, um, any other location, I guess you could always just, um, add this before your prime and you've got your, your instant gravel mix to um, then colour when you're doing your, the rest of your base and it's it's so much cheaper than your regular hobby supplies so uh, reptile sand just putting it out there you might want to check Amazon see if they've got any as well all right team I hope everybody's doing well hope your projects are going well hope you're keeping safe thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time